am an American businessman looking to acquire or purchase a business in Dubai. Uh, he wants to know what that process would involve. He says that he has an existing LLC in Connecticut and was wondering if it's possible to purchase a business in Dubai using a Connecticut LLC. Do you want to comment on that? Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that can get a little complex, right? I mean, if, 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 if the business in the UAE, which I'm assuming is in some sort of a company in the UAE, to make that LLC the shareholder of the business here in the UAE can be pretty complex, not so much from a tax standpoint, mm -hmm. we'll get to that in a second, but just from sort of a regulatory standpoint in, in, in the UAE, right? Because whatever the free zone or, or if it's a local company is set up, they're gonna want legalized, attested copies of all the corporate documents from the United States. And because the UAE is not a member of the, the Hague Convention, they don't recognize foreign notaries. So this all has to go over the embassies and, and takes quite a long time. Um, from a tax perspective, it's a single member LLC, you own it individually, it doesn't really make much of a difference. But you are gonna wanna do a, a, a kind of a deep dive into what the tax consequences of owning that business are gonna be, right? If you're the sole owner of it, it may be a controlled foreign corporation, mm -hmm. then you have to look at whether there's gonna be guilty tax or subpart F um, income. And you know, one of the things that you can't do if it makes sense is you can always check the box uh, file an identity classification election on the Dubai business, electing for it to be treated as a, as a disregarded entity or a partnership, and then you kind of get rid of, then you have flow through taxation, but in a lot of times that works out better, and especially now with the corporate income tax coming into play, you might even get a tax credit. So okay. that's something that needs to be analyzed. Right, I mean, Joe didn't ask, but people ask, clients ask me this all the time, like the holy grail is the ability to invest in some foreign company and defer paying taxes until there's an actual distribution. Is that possible? It used to be, yeah. <laughs> until Trump changed the rules in 2017. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it used to be possible as long as it wasn't passive income, right? Mm -hmm. So rents, royalties, interest, capital gains, um, then so sort of income from an active business you used to be able to defer it. Uh, but with the, the implementation of the guilty tax regime, that's now no longer possible unless that foreign company has paid at least 13.125% foreign tax. Uh, because then you get an indirect foreign tax credit. But now, and I mean, especially if we're talking about a business in the UAE where there's no income tax or the, the, the tax is gonna be under that 13.125%, you're not gonna get as much benefit from it. I mean, a, a lot of times I find it a lot simpler to do a, a check the box election, and just treat everything as flow through and, and take a foreign tax credit for whatever in corporate income taxes the business is paid. Okay. If the individual has a, a revocable family trust, wouldn't that mitigate the debt tax somewhat? No, because th those are tax transparent. So, I mean, for, for they're gonna, the IRS is gonna view that as if the, the settler of that revocable trust um, own the shares themselves, right? So in order for a trust to be able to offer protection from the U.S. estate tax, it needs to be a complex trust that usually means it needs to be irrevocable. It usually means you can't be control in control of it and dictate who's going to benefit from it. So it has to be, the trust has to be set up in a, in a particular way in order for it to achieve that goal. But a revocable trust for sure won't do it. And, and just taking that one step further, so if someone wanted to set up uh, an irrevocable trust here in the Emirates, which of the free zones would you be looking at? So the, there's two free zones in the UAE that have trusts. Uh, it's um, the ADGM and, and here in the DIFC. I typically use DIFC. Um, and then you just need to decide whether or not, I, I think there's a couple things to consider, right? Is One is, um, do you want to have it professionally managed by a professional trust company and, and pay them the money? A lot of people don't want to do that. They don't want to give up control of their assets, which I understand. Uh, the other option is they do allow you to set up a company or a foundation to act as a private trust company that you control. The problem with that is if you still have too much control, the IRS is still going to view the assets of the trust as your assets. Mm -hmm. um, the other option is, which I actually often prefer better because you don't need a separate trust company, is to use a foundation mm -hmm. uh, that's treated like a trust for U.S. tax purposes. And that you can set up in either ADGM, DIFC, or, or RAC ICC. Okay. Gotcha. So if you're a six, seven, or eight-figure investor, entrepreneur, or business owner who needs a tailor-made solution from a qualified team of professionals, we can help you achieve the international lifestyle, the freedom, and even the tax savings you're looking for. 
Visit us at htj.tax and live that international life.